Shall we open our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 2? Uh, let's go to Luke 24, verse number 49. It is this verse that leads to Acts chapter 2. So let us read this. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. It is possible for us to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ without having received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is obvious that no man can be a Christian or no man can be born again apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. All we know about God to be born again was by the Holy Spirit. Nobody knows all the functions of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is behind everything. There are some secret works of the Holy Spirit that we don't even know. There are some specific works of the Holy Spirit. There are some works that the Holy Spirit does that are specific for some specific occasions. So the functions of the Holy Spirit, they are many and nobody knows them. For example, when we were in darkness, it was the Holy Spirit that revealed the word of God to us. No man knows the word of God. Flesh and blood cannot comprehend the word of God. It is the Holy Spirit that brings us that reveals the word of God to us. It's a secret work of the Holy Spirit. There's no man, you know, baby Christians will always say when they are born again, well, I was listening to the pastor, the pastor preached, so the, the preaching comes with me. Now I can't get up. I say, no, may I go give my life to Jesus. That's what baby Christians, that's what they say. But as time goes on, they discover that yes, it was a secret work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the things of God. That understanding that you talk, it comes with me. The word comes with me. It is the Holy Spirit that brought about the sweet tea of the word into your heart. Without the Holy Spirit, no one can comprehend the word of God. Romans 8, 8 7 to 9. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the Lord of God, to the, to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It is the spirit of Christ. The secret work of the Holy Spirit to enlighten you, to open your heart to the receiving of the word of God. It is not by intellect. It is not by the work of your mind. It is not, I don't listen so they, I can't understand. Eh, the word comes with me. Now I can't get up. I can't get up. No, it is a secret work of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14 for the natural mind receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually descent. The word of God is empowered by the Holy Spirit. The word of God is spirit and power. The mind of man cannot receive the word of God. It is only the secret work of the Holy Spirit to water the mind of man for him to receive and to comprehend the word of God. 
A man cannot accept that he's a sinner except by the Holy Spirit. If you tell a man that he has committed adultery, he will answer you, what did the take woman do? Before God create woman, what is made them take them do? If you tell a man that he's, he has stolen, uh -huh, what do you want to make her do? When I never chop since morning, so when you make her see food there, then make her leave her. Now God now he put her there for me. Huh? He put the food there, the owner walk away. Now, now I take the food, now I eat her. Are they hungry? That is not called stealing. What do you want to make her do? When the Mopo come, he asked me, where are Nami? Nami talk that thing. Uh -huh. If I tell her, say Nami talk her, you know, say what you go do me now. I be fool. Now I tell her, say, don't be me. And I didn't go walk past. Thank God. Say, I tell her, say, not be me. Thank God. Say, I lie. You see, the sinner will, a, a worldly man can never agree that is a sinner. It is the Spirit of God that leads a man to say that, yes, I am a sinner. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2.10 But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of man. To be born again is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the secret work of the Holy Spirit. It is for this reason, each time I am preaching an evangelistic message, I am always saying, if God is speaking to you that you are a child of God, it is God that tells a man or a woman secretly, you are a child of God. You were in Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world. You have been predestined to be conformed to the image of, of, of God, to the image of Christ. If you don't know yourself, the Holy Spirit will remind you, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. From the foundation of the world, God has put you in the spiritual loins of Jesus. God has put you in Jesus. You were crucified with him. You died with him. You resurrected with him. You are seated in high places with him. You are a child of God. And then you see the child of God will break down. It is true. It is true. It is true. But a reprobate will fight the Holy Spirit to the end. Will fight the word of God to the air. It is the Holy Spirit. John 3, 5 Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is the born of the Spirit is spirit. To be born again you must be born of the Spirit. You must be born of the Spirit. You must be born of the Holy Ghost. It is not of the flesh. It is not of the mind. It is not of any man. But it is of the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Spirit is so smart that he does not violate your personality. It gives you the impression that you are the one making the decision. It gives you the impression that you are, you are the one deciding. I don't decide for Christ. There is nothing like deciding for Christ. It's Christ that decided for you. Amen. Put your hands together for the Holy Spirit. It's Christ. Yes, it is in the Bible. To them that received him. Yes, it is in the Bible. But that receive is a passive receive. It is receiving what has been given to you? It is not what you go and receive. It's not what you go and receive it yourself. If you are not given, you cannot receive. That receiving is passive. It's what God has given to you. When God gives something to a man, 
he cannot receive. It is the same God that will empower the man to receive. God is giving. And God's God behind your heart secretly and say, son, take it. And you will think you are talking to yourself. But this is still the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is giving and it's the Holy Spirit that is working on you to receive the word of God. Shall we put our hands together for the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Romans 8, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Apostle Paul will burst into these words. Then, where is the boasting? Where is the boasting? I don't receive Christ. As you see me here, so I don't receive him. I don't receive him. Where is the boasting? It is by grace. You see, thank God for the humility of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for this secret work of the Holy Spirit. That he does not violate your personality. You don't see, you don't see a principle trying to decide for you. Trying to coerce you into receiving Christ. No, it is a gentle walk of the Holy Spirit is counseling you and is moving you and is pushing you forward, small, small and all that. By the time you know you have, you have received Christ and there's joy into your heart. And then you ask yourself, so I'm born again. How did I, I cannot believe that I'm a child of God. I cannot believe. As I stand here on this altar, this is a question I'm always asking myself. I cannot believe that I, Dr. Lee, and stand here and be preaching what I'm preaching to you now. Because when I look back and I ask myself, how did this come to be? When did I make this decision? Yes, of course, I appear to have made this decision, but it is the secret work of the Holy Spirit. Amen, everybody. So in other words, what I'm saying, I'm trying to assert that you can be a believer that you can have the Holy Spirit in you and still not be baptized with the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to show you that all of these things that I've just said that is the work of the Holy Spirit in convicting, the work of the Holy Spirit in enlightening, the work of the Holy Spirit in being born again. That all of these things they happen they are secret functions of the Holy Spirit but that does not mean that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost and for those of you who are here during the prayer meeting I made this illustration and I said you see a man who goes out when he's drizzling he says that well this is not serious rain he goes out He's walking from here to Deco Road. By the time he gets to Deco Road, he can be wet. But the rain is just all like the dew in the morning. It's fall, but just small. Of course, we men of science, we know that at any given time, there's dew. That's what you call humidity. The humidity in Nigeria is said to be high. Even when the rain appears not to be, even when the sun is there, there's these little particles of water that is constantly flo floating in the atmosphere. And the quantity is less or more. We call it humidity. What is humidity? Is this little quantity of water that floats in the atmosphere. Now, I'm talking of drizzling. When the rain is drizzling, it's still the rain, but it's drizzling. So you can walk from here to Dekoro to, to, uh, to MPA before you find that, oh, you are wet. But when the rain is falling the way it's falling, number two, like this, 
By the time you walk to the gates, you're already drenched. It is still the rain. It is still the rain. It is water. Number three, the same water, you can drink it. A glass, two glasses of water. It's still rain. It's still water. And number four, you can be taken and just dipped into the ocean. In one second, you are drenched. In one second, you, you are, if you can't swim, we are, I mean, you, you must have, you are, you are drowned in one second. With water outside you, with water inside you. You see, these are all degrees of rain. What I'm just said to you is this like the drizzling when the Holy Spirit is behind all of these things, doing them in all of these secret ways. But, and the Holy Spirit in you is a different thing. But what we are talking about, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is a phenomenon. It is the promise, a unique and specific promise of God in which you are dipped into the water in a split second. You are inundated. You are overwhelmed. In one second, you are overwhelmed. In other words, what would have happened from here to NPA in one second? That's what the New Testament is talking about. That's what I'm talking about. To be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But as you can notice from the teaching of John the Baptist, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is done by the Holy Spirit, but by the Lord Jesus. So you find in John 126, John chapter 1, verse 26, it says, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes latched I am not worthy to unloose. Verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent to me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom? Thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. The same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. John said that he baptizes with water. Just the way we pastors and everyone, we baptize with water. But Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. Now, very quickly, I want to prove to you, I want to show you in some of these scriptures what I said at the beginning. That is, that a man can be born again for many years without being baptized with the Holy Spirit. It is possible. There are some people who are born again. The day they are born again, all of this happens simultaneously. The day they are born again, they are baptized with the Holy Ghost. But there are some people who are born again are, and are not baptized with the Holy Ghost. To be baptized with the Holy Ghost does not mean that, well, now you are making heaven. No, a child of God to make heaven is to believe in Jesus. Is to be crucified with Jesus, to die with him, and to be resurrected with him, and seated in the heavenly places with him. This is what it is to be born again. So we are not talking about making heaven now. We are not talking about being born again, but we are talking about this gift, this promise of the Father, 
that Jesus says that every man must seek. It is a promise. It is a prophecy of Joel that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That the time is coming. Amen. And we see the apostles experienced it. I will show you that. The apostles were born again, but they were not baptized with the Holy Ghost until the time of Pentecost. Amen. So, I want to show you some proofs in the Bible to show that you can be born again for many years without being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Once you are born again, you are in the kingdom of heaven. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the promise of the Father for power, for witnessing, so that you can be an effective Christian, so that you can have the assurance of your salvation, so that you can preach the word of God without fear, with boldness, so that the wisdom of God can fill you, so that you can stand as a child of God, not being carried away by every wind of doctrine, like the church in Nigeria. It's carried away, and no wonder, there are fake prophets all over the place, deceiving the church, in healing, in prophecies and all that, and people are, they are falling for it. Amen. So let us look at some of these proofs to show you that it is possible to be born again without being baptized with the Holy Ghost. I start with the Old Testament saints. These Old Testament saints, they were much the children of God as you and I are. Abraham is the father of the faithful. A child of God. And Matthew 8, 11, listen to what the Lord says. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to these scriptures, and the others, I don't want to be bothered about the others now because I'm trying to show you through the scriptures that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that these guys are in heaven, that they are saints. The New Testament called them saints. They are saints and they are in heaven. And I'm trying to show you that they were not baptized with the Holy Ghost. They were not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But then, don't be foolish because I've said so. Uh -huh. So, if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were not baptized with the Holy Ghost, then what did Tali they call? What do you consign us now with Holy Ghost? What do we need Holy Ghost for again? We don't make heaven. It's to empower you. It's to strengthen you. Amen. It's so that you can have the assurance. So that you can be like Peter, who was a fisherman. Who didn't know all of these things before Jesus Christ died? Who didn't know all of these things? He didn't know the revelation. But when that day of Pentecost came, Peter rose up. Rose up. I'm sure to the surprise of all the other disciples. They were all now filled with the Holy Ghost. They were empowered with the Holy Spirit from on high. In the midst of the Sanhedrin, in the midst of those very people who killed Jesus, Peter started explaining to them. He started speaking things that perhaps he did not even read, that he did not know. The Holy Spirit started revealing all of these things. He said, this is Jesus that you killed. He said, I don't think that you killed him. It is by the determinate counsel of God. God himself had wanted to sacrifice him. So don't think that you yourself can... Where did he come with that knowledge? The power of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. When a man is filled with the Holy Ghost, he will begin to speak mysteries. Abraham 
Isaac and Jacob. They are in the kingdom of God. In Galatians 3, it shows that all the children of faith are the children of Abraham. He is the father of the faithful. In verse 7, Galatians 3, 7, it says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. We are all children of Abraham, but Abraham was not baptized with the Holy Ghost. So, so then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You see, Abraham was not baptized. Why? Because Jesus was not yet glorified. Abraham saw Jesus in front. Paul, as the apostle to the Gentiles, goes out of his way to emphasize this great thing, that when the Gentiles became Christians, what happened to them was that they became fellow citizens with the saints. The saints, as I said, at this time, the Apostle Paul was writing this letter. The church had just started. Fellow citizens with the saints. He is referring to the saints, saints in the Old Testament. That is to say, the saints of the Old Testament and joint hands with the saints of the Old Testament the way the New Testament puts it. And in Ephesians 2.11, you say, wherefore well, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by her, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the, and strangers from the covenants of promise, that is, that is what these Gentiles were. Verse 13, he said, But now, in Christ Jesus, ye, who sometimes were far off, have made nigh by the blood of Jesus. And in verse 19, he said, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Who are the saints? Isaac, Abraham. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and Moses, and the prophets, and Jeremiah, all of those saints, fellow citizens with the saints, and the household of God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David, all these men of the Old Testament, they all belong to the household of God. And when we become Christians, as Gentiles, we become fellow citizens with them, and members of the household of God. Of God. Now, to make this abundantly clear, the apostle repeats it in Ephesians 3. The apostle says that the revelation has been made known to him of this mystery. And what is this mystery? Here it is in verse 5, Ephesians 3 5. He says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus. In other words, Abraham, he believed in Christ. If you think that the Old Testament saints were not children of God, you are denying the whole scripture. That's what I just read to you. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are in the kingdom of God. They are the saints. That's the teaching of the Old Testament that I just read to you in the book of Galatians and in the book, and in the book of Ephesians. But these people, they had not been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They were not baptized with the Holy Spirit because Jesus 
had not been glorified. Yes, the Holy Spirit was in David. Take not thy spirit from me. The joy of my salvation. Take not the joy of my salvation from me. Yes, it was another function of the Holy Spirit. Some say, yes, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, it was in another sense of the Holy Spirit. You see, you, you, you see, you can use meat. Meat can cook stew. Meat can cook okra soup. Meat can you can use meat in banga soup. You can use meat. The Holy Spirit is everything. He orchestrates everything. He's the master of everything. Amen. He empowers everything. But in this sense of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is only after Jesus has been glorified. Amen, somebody. It's only after the sense in which we are looking at it now. The sense, the New Testament baptism of the Holy Spirit is after the glorification of Jesus. The Holy Spirit had not been given until Jesus was glorified. Abraham, as I said, believed in Christ. Our Lord says in John 8.56 Look at John 8.56 Your father Abraham he was telling the Jews he was telling the Pharisees he said your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. In other words Abraham, like all of the saints they looked forward. They saw what God had done. They saw that God had given his, own, his only begotten son. And they stretched their faith forward. They stretched their faith forward in order to announce that what God was doing. But we, for example now, we are going backwards to 2,000 years ago. That what Christ did 2,000 years ago, it is still efficacious still today. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't know, if you as an African, you don't know what I'm talking about, then you are not an African. Is it not true? Is it not true in this our shrines? All these shrines that you see, Egbesu, Agbasa, all of these shrines, Obodo shrine. What is the sacrifice behind it? It's a human, human beings. Why? As far as the world is concerned, that is the greatest object of sacrifice. That is it. Some of them, they are goats. Some of them, they are cows. The highest of them is a human being. That is it. But that sacrifice was done years ago by the man who probably started the shrine. Sacrifice a human being to invite the demon. And so, from year in, year out, they renew the sacrifice. Just like the sacrifice that you find in the Old Testament. That is what all of these shrines they do. They have their season. Every year, they will renew the sacrifice. Another sacrifice to renew it. To push it forward. It was so in the New Testament. But in the book of Hebrews, he said, he said, the blood of goats cannot cleanse our conscience. The conscience is the spiritual part of a human being. The, cons- the blood of goats cannot get there. The blood of goats can cleanse the external. It can cleanse the altar. But when it comes to the spirit part of the human being, which is the real part of the human being, the blood of goats cannot cleanse it. Amen. So what you find, these men, they looked forward. Just as the way we look backwards to that sacrifice. They looked forward to 2,000 years ago. We are looking backwards. But what made them children of God 
was that they believed in the sacrifice that was made once and for all. The sacrifice of the Lamb of God was made once and forever. It does not have to be renewed again. Once and forever. And not only that, it is the sacrifice of the priest. And this is the theme of the book of Hebrews. The supremacy of the sacrifice. Once and for all. The supremacy of the priest. The priest laid himself for sacrifice. You go to a native doctor. And the native doctor, and the native doctor tells you, I myself, I will sacrifice myself so that that charm that you want will work. That's what Jesus did on, on our behalf. He did not say, well, let me go to bring, go bring goat, go bring yam. Well, bring yam, bring pepper, bring uh, oil, bring uh, uh, onions, bring that. What does that mean? The native doctor, <laughs> the hungry. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this man, they were saved by looking forward. There is only one way of salvation. Old Testament and new, irrespective, Old Testament and new. There's only one way. Even with the Jews, all Jews, you must be born again. Whether you are Jews, sometimes I see the church is joking. When they are thinking, oh, don't touch a Jew. Don't touch Israel. Don't touch that. The New Testament does not care about that. The word of the New Testament is this. You must be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Whether you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, whether you are an Urobo, whoever you are, or an Israelite, whether you are a priest or not, it is the blood of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Shall we put our hands together for the Holy Spirit? It is the blood. It is the blood. The blood. The blood of Jesus. That is what saves a man. Whether he's a Jew or is an Israelite, it is the blood of Jesus. From the beginning to the end, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it is always Christ and him crucified. These men of Old Testament were believers, but they were never baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why? According to John 7, 9, I repeat it again. The Holy Spirit had not been given because Jesus has not been glorified. John 7, 9. It is a particular work of the Holy Spirit for a particular purpose. The Holy Spirit that had Samson, as I said, it's not that it's not that Holy Spirit we are talking about now. It is not that function of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that quickened Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the prophets, it, that is not that fun. I'm not referring to that function. I'm referring to this particular function of the Holy Spirit that comes after the glorification of Jesus. It is for a particular purpose. Amen, somebody. For the children of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And our Lord made this clear. In Matthew 11, 11, he said, if you look at John the Baptist, take John the Baptist, for example. John the Baptist. Matthew 11, 11. Among them that are born of women, they had not risen a greater man than John the Baptist. <laughs> Did you see that? Of all the prophets, of all the prophets, born of a woman. He said they had not risen one like John the Baptist. And this John the Baptist, he did not do one miracle. One. He did not do one miracle. He was a forerunner. 
the Lord said there is none like him. <clears throat> John the Baptist is the son of God. Is a child of God. And yet, John himself was not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 11, the same verse 11, the second part of Matthew 11, 11. He said, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Why did he say that? In other words, he, this is John the Baptist as a prophet. This is John the Baptist, not in the kingdom of God, but he says he that is he said the least in the kingdom of God what is the least you know the, this baptism of the Holy Spirit in in 2 Corinthians 5 5 the Bible calls it the earnest of our salvation it is the, the first installment it is the advance it is the foretaste of what it is in the kingdom of God in other words, God slices a small part of heaven and gives it to you. Manage with this one first. This is just a part of heaven. Just they take and manage. It's like a man who wants to go to America. First of all, he goes to Lagos. He has not been to Lagos before. By the time he gets to Lagos to take his ticket, hey, I go go stay here. I'll stay for Lagos. Ah, Lagos, fine though. Ah, hey, see Lagos. No. Go see New York. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Go and see San Francisco. Or go and see Tokyo. The Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the earnest of the kingdom of God. It is a small size the word earnest, it means down payment. It means an installment. It means an advance of what you will experience in the kingdom of God. When people speak in tongues, it is, there are two types of tongues. The first tongue is the tongue which is the language of heaven. And this language of heaven, when you are when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, some people speak in that language of heaven without even understanding what they are speaking. They themselves, they don't understand what they are, what they are speaking, but God is understand. They themselves, they don't understand. Can you imagine that? Is that not a mystery? Somebody starts What in a talk now? I don't know. But the angels they are clapping. Hey, hey, oh, praise the Lord. What you just said now? That's the first song, the language of heaven. The second one is another language. The, this first one, you don't need any interpretation because nobody can interpret. Nobody can interpret it. But the second one is another language. It is an earthly language, maybe Chinese, that you don't understand. And you are speaking it, but you don't understand. There might be somebody, a Chinese, who is the congregation, who just ah! <laughs> The usher says, shut up! <laughs> I can't go open your part. You don't hear what you talk so. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> so for that another language, for that another language, you need an interpretation. So when a man speaks in a language, in tongues, and there's no interpretation, the assumption is that it is a heavenly language because he cannot interpret. So Paul to the Corinthians, if you speak in tongues, you must make sure you interpret. If not, we cannot go take a Kakrame language, take us all of us here. And all of us will say, Amen. You know we're better for all of you now. In another language. And all of us will say, Amen. Amen. They cause you now they go. 
You come sooner, they go, Amen. And by next Sunday, everybody is dead. Everybody is sick. Everybody they vomit. Why? Because you said Amen. What does Amen mean? So shall it be upon you. So you see, it is for this reason, you see, the earnest of the Holy Spirit is a language of heaven. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a slice of heaven. And once you have that slice of heaven, of course, you can start speaking all languages. You can start speaking the language in heaven. You can start speaking Chinese, Urubu, Ukme, Shakiri, Ibibio, any language at all. You can start speaking it. You may not understand it. Another person who is also filled, been baptized with the Holy Spirit, he will just, they are interpreters who are interpreting what they don't even understand. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> because in heaven, everything is what? Possible. When a man is baptized with the Holy Ghost, We can just look. The Apostle Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius. Just by speaking, and the people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Just by speaking, some people were healed. Amen, somebody. So this is John the Baptist himself, who, of all men born of women, there's none that is greater than him. But it says, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Amen, somebody. The least in the kingdom of God, the least man in the kingdom that is baptized in the Holy Ghost is greater than John the Baptist. <clears throat> then let me read this scripture to you, which is a very important scripture with regards to what we are saying now. John 7, 37 to 39. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on, on me, as the scripture saith, listen, see the sequence, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And what of this scripture is he talking about? He's talking about the prophecy of Joel. Verse 39. But this he spake, this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. He said, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet was not yet glorified it is the promise of the father God wants to do it so that you will not be a Christian a weak Christian for nothing amen somebody so that you will be a man of God sound standing on the word of God not fearing the power of God will come upon you and did you all know that Jesus himself was baptized with the Holy Spirit? And it was after this baptism of the Holy Spirit that he started his ministry. I'm also going to show you that the Apostle Paul, all the prophets, they, it, it came a time they believed first before they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. And this is what I'm saying that we should do this season. Amen. You can be born again, and yet, you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost. There are some of us who are born again, and we were baptized at the same day. For those of us who are not baptized, you have not been baptized by the Holy Ghost. Because I cannot baptize you by the Holy Ghost. It is Jesus himself that can baptize you. Yes, I can lay hands on you, and say be baptized in the Holy Ghost. But God must first of all want to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. If God does not want to baptize you with the Holy Ghost, he will not. But let me say this. He's always wanting to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. 
But the reason why I say why he does not want, it's not that he does not want, it's that you don't want. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are in a new season. Do you want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost? Then let's rise up on our feet. We are going to do this series. I'm going to continue with what I'm saying now. Continue with this. Just to prove to you that even though you are born again, you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And if you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you need to be, there must be a rebaptism. It, it's, it's an ongoing thing for every child of God. Shall we put our hands together for the Holy Spirit? <laughs>